Hey everybody, it's June 21st, 2023. Thanks so much for checking out our channel again today, Big Toe Bushcraft, Wild Foraging and Identification. I'm Tori Clark, and this is my balancing dog, Little Dog. It's foraging time. Today we are making a beef, cattail, uh, bull thistle, and heel all stir fry. We are making cattail flour, cattail pollen, and nodding onion bread and also berry jam. Actually it'll be jelly, so we're removing all the, the husks and uh, skins and whatnot. So, come for a walk with me and see what we can eat. So we're going to use the entirety of this plant, from the rhizome right up to the pollen head. Right there. Okay, so when we pop this off, this is uh, the part that we want. And then uh, we're going to be using, because I don't have a basket, we're going to have to weave a basket. So, very cool. We're going to get into uh, a little bit more bushcraft. Alright, so you can probably see that this guy's not producing pollen yet, but it's perfect for harvesting the flower pieces that we're going to be utilizing in our bread. So, I will find one with more pollen on it, and we're going to harvest that pollen. So we've got this one here, and as you can see, the top of it is quite yellow, and that yellow is all the pollen. So, we're going to take this, and just to give you an example, see all that? It's amazing. So we're just going to slide it into the jar, and we're going to whack it a few times. Boom, boom, boom. It's going to leave the flower head. We've got the pollen. And uh, we're going to collect off of a few more plants. And then we're going to weave up a basket so we can carry home the flower heads. Yeah, so we've got a bunch more heads in here that we can uh, take from. And same thing. You know, see they've got all that crazy amounts of pollen. Also, when you're doing this, you are transferring pollen from other heads into the flower head of other plants. So you are cross-pollinating everything for them. You're doing their job. And uh, the wind pretty much does it. There's always wind down at the lake. And a bunch of these have already gone a little bit too far uh, for what I need. However, we'll just keep gathering. And I'll show you what I've collected up at the end. So, this is what we have collected. Like I've got uh, quite a bit here. So, and that was from about 25 heads. Uh, so we will uh, sift it when we get home, because uh, there's always the odd little tiny beetle. They're, uh, yeah, it's just protein. Now, I admit that it is not exactly Gucci, but it's going to serve its purpose. I only have to get back home with it, so not like I'm hiking, hiking over mountains and hills and terrain. So these are kind of what we're looking for. These here. 
So what you take the sheath off, you've got a flower head that hasn't started forming any pollen yet. So I'm just going to pop the top off of that, put it in our little basket, and grab the next one. This is right over here. Okay, I don't like taking too many from one spot, so I'm just going to carry on down and find another spot, which is not very far away. I think I have enough to make our bread. Yeah, so that's the pollen and the flower heads. Now we just have to harvest the tips, the meristematic tips on the bottom, and we're good to go. And as I was traveling along, as I was traveling along, we came across some lovely berries. Trailing Pacific berries. Rubus ursinus. And I am going to infuse those into some water and uh, carbonate it and have a nice sparkling drink with my dinner. Very cool. Alright, so let's harvest some of the uh, center parts of these guys. There's a few here that are going to work good. This one, yeah, that one, and I'll take that one. Okay. Peeling them down is quite simple. You just run your finger down the side of it, and they just flop off until you get down to that lovely little center. Of what we're looking for. This is the soft center that we are looking for. And uh, it's, it's really, you get quite a bit out of the one. See how uh, nice and pliable this is? It's going to work out great in a stir fry. So I'm going to keep collecting these and uh, I'll see you in the next clip. And we have our, uh, what I call linguine noodles from the Typhalatifolia, the cattail. All right, so this is the next item on our foraging list, Prunella vulgaris. So vulgaris means common, and prunella was derived from the word brunella, which is derived from another word from Germany, and uh, it means infection of the throat, or a type of infection of the throat. Uh, Die Braun, I believe it is how it's pronounced. Nonetheless, we'll get more into this on one of the next episodes. But everything about this plant is edible, and uh, of course, by the name Heal All, Self Heal, it does everything. It's related to the mint, uh, which is also related to the uh, Lamium purpureum, the dead nettle that uh, we uh, focused on the first video. Anyways, so we're going to harvest a few of these little flowers and uh, move on to the bull thistle. So this is the bull thistle. Yeah, the um, the tops actually, these are very spiny, so I'm going to be wearing gloves. They can be used uh, like an, an, a miniature artichoke. Uh, you can boil them up. And the inside of the stalk is uh, very much like celery. Uh, very moist and uh, delicious, but they are very prickly and I find the best way to harvest these are to leave them standing and use your knife and just slide down the stalk cutting off the limbs or the leaves and uh, then you can kind of shave it off and get to the inside which is what you want the part you want okay so see you in a bit
And that is how you avoid getting all the thorns in your fingers. Pretty simple. Okay, so I'm going to continue doing this because I need a few stalks. And uh, I'll catch up to you after that. So by the end of May, the camas have uh, died off and all the nutrients have gone back into the bulb. But by the beginning of June, these little lovelies, the nodding onion, Allium cernuum, come out. And they call them nodding because the flowers kind of look like they're nodding. And the second that you touch them, you can smell the onion. It's fabulous. Now, I have not been able to find any of the bulblets. Um, they may not have any. Uh, so, but you can see they seem to have a just a root system. However, the stems and the flower have strong, strong onion flavor. So that's what we're going to utilize today. So we have here the Oso Berry, Oomleria Saraciformis. Okay, so Oomleria, um, because it was discovered by a German-American pharmacist, believe it or not, in the early 1800s, named uh, Augustus Gottlieb Oomler. Um, it's also known as the Indian Plum, because if you look at it, it looks very much like uh, a, a small prune plum, miniature prune plum. They even got the little cleft. It's also known as, oh, the ravens are back. It's also known as Oregon Plum, because they start out a yellow, orangey color. And uh, at this point, they're very bitter. It's not until they're black that they're good. So we're going to take uh, a bunch of these and we're going to make a jelly out of them to put on our cattail flour bread. So let's get started with the berries first. We'll infuse these in the water. And uh, these are the Trailing Pacific blackberries and full of flavor. They're tiny, but they pack a big punch. So, really good. And then, uh, after it's infused for a bit, I am going to go to my soda stream and give it a little life. Alright, I'll fill this up with water, stick it in the fridge so it can stay cold, and uh, do its infusing. And the Oso berries have all been washed, and I just have to squish them up. These have uh, a stone in them, like a, a cherry or a, or a plum, and they're, they're good size of the actual berry itself, so there's not a lot of meat on these. So I had to pick extra in order to make the jelly that I wanted to make. So time to crush them up. and I'm not going to bore you with the entire process all the way along the way. So we'll skip through. So you can see the size of the stones. They take up a lot of the berry. But they come out quite readily, so... But stain your fingers just like the blueberries do. Oh, and I forgot to mention about the flavor of these. Uh, you know when you're eating a watermelon and you've eaten all the beautiful pink and you've gotten down to the white rind and uh, before it gets to the green and you start eating the white rind? That is what these taste like, or at least to me anyways. Um, it's the best analogy I can give you. So let's see how well I can separate it with this colander. I don't know. We'll find out. Alright, so I made a mess. I've cleaned it all up. So I have approximately one cup of the strained berries. Now it's, uh, I use like a cranberry jelly recipe. Uh, so it calls for actually four cups of cranberries. Uh, now I only have one cup, so I've got to reduce it all by four. So it calls for two cups of sugar and two cups of water. So I got to uh, do my math and uh, get my measurements just right. And then I'm going to put it on to simmer. So I don't have pectin uh, to thicken the jelly. However, I do have the next best thing. I grabbed some of the uh, cattail rhizome. So it's a thickener, and I'm going to attempt to use a little bit of this and uh, see how it works out. So I'm just going to peel it, and easiest with the peeler, 
and uh, these little hairs are kind of a, a booger. Okay, so this is the rhizome after it has been peeled. And I'm just going to, believe it or not, I'm going to put it in a garlic press because I don't need a lot. I just need a little bit just for thickening. Hmm. As I said, I don't need a lot, so I'm just going to take a little bit off that. And I may use the rest of this for thickening the stir-fry. Okay, so this is simmered now for 20 minutes. And I am going to add half a cup of sugar. Put that mixed in, and then we'll bring her to a boil. And then it can go in the fridge to set. Okay, so we're just going to transfer this into a bowl. Awesome color. Now, I don't know if this is going to set up and thicken, but we will find out. Time for the bread. Okay, so we're just going to uh, start stripping the flour off of these. All you have to do is give them a squeeze, and it literally comes off the stalk, just like it was a corn on the cob. Look at that. And that's what you end up with. Pretty simple. And this is what you end up with. And there are little toothpicks in the middle. So it's like a corn on the cob. Yeah, this has very much like a couscous texture to it. Okay, I just got to do a few more and uh, we'll start making the bread. Alright, so it is time to dice up the nodding onions. And I'm just going to take off their root pieces there. Oh, it's just such a nice onion smell. Really, really is. love that smell. So, one cup of flour. Not that flour. The other flour. One cup of cattail fluff. And two tablespoons of cornmeal. Now, instead of cornmeal, I am actually going to use the pollen from the same thing. which kind of looks like cornmeal in the end. One. Two. Okay, so we're just going to add a little bit of baking soda, a little bit of baking powder, a bit of salt, a bit of pepper, and we're going to add up these, uh, add in these chopped onions and some shredded Parmesan. This is all going into the bread, my friends. And I'm cut back on the cheese because Parmesan is uh, quite smelly. And I don't really want it overtaking the onion. Okay, so I'm just going to add my uh, baking soda and baking powder and uh, carry on. Yeah, just want. Uh, I don't even want a full teaspoon. Now I know I said I was not going to add those flower flowers, but you know what? They really, really taste great, and I just added them in, and why not? A little bit of color. Okay, on to the liquids. So we need a cup of, you can either use milk, cream, or buttermilk, whatever you like. I'm just using milk because that's what I had on hand. Three eggs to add into this. Okay. 
and we have five tablespoons of melted butter to add in. I'll get this mixed up and we're going to fold that in to the dry. Okay, that looks pretty good. We have our 9 inch bread pan. I'm just going to pour this all in there. I can't honestly tell you how good this smells. Like, I mean, this is going to be a pretty neat little onion cheese bread, I think. I hope. You never know until it's done and you taste it. So I got the oven preheated to around 400 and uh, it's going to go in for about 20 minutes 20 to 25 minutes okay wish me luck yeah so I bought uh, two t-bone steaks for like 17 bucks really quite choked but I thought oh, that you know getting two steaks but when they're only three quarters of an inch thick not very happy about that but Nonetheless, this is what we're using. Okay, so we're going to let this uh, extra virgin olive oil heat up. Oh yeah, I love that sound. So while that is frying up, we're going to prepare our cattail, which I've already done all the peeling, so that makes it easy, and I've also done all the peeling of my bull thistle. It's so appealing. See, very, very tender. You know, it's uh, going to be really nice in there. Then we have our bull thistle. I'm just going to put that to one side there. Do the same thing with this guy. Except I'm just going to clean up the ends a bit. It's just a couple of pieces of them discolored. These are really nice, actually, even on trail side. If you have a uh, dry mouth, you've been walking for a bit. It's really nice. And I also picked up because I needed a little acid, so I grabbed some uh, sheep sorrel. That will add a nice little thing. And these are great. Um, this self-heal, you can just throw the whole thing just in there, just as it is. Uh, I'm going to throw it in at the very last minute because I don't uh, want it to cook too much. But yeah, so that is the plan. Of course, you can't have a stir-fry without a little bit of soy sauce. Doesn't take much. Here go these guys. I feel like I'm in Stephen Yan's kitchen. Back in the 70s there was a show called Walk with Yan and uh, he was just amazing. Actually I was uh, good friends with his son. I grew up with him. Um, he had his own TV show. I uh, taught my mom actually how to uh, cook Chinese food and uh, very 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 nice genuine person he was. I highly doubt that he's even still alive anymore. Oh, she's coming along. Let those uh, vegetables uh, soften up a wee tad. And lastly, we're just going to toss in a nice little arrows.
just adds a really nice color to it. Smells absolutely amazing. Okay, so I'm just going to filter this out, get the berries out, and I'm going to have to put it right back into the bottle again because I need to add some carbonation. Wow, look at that beautiful color. It's like a rosé. Okay, so I'm going to put it right back in, and then I'm going to put it through my soda stream. Not that hard to make your own flavored sparkling water. In the summertime when the weather is hot. Okay, so we have the stir fry. We have the drink. We also have. Okay, so I'm going to try the bread in a second. I know that the stir fry was a success because I've already had a few nibbles and it's still so good. I think the bread was a success. It springs back when I touch it. Now the jelly did not congeal like I wanted it to. But the flavor is really, it's, it's so good. Being oh so berry, it's oh so good. So let's cut up this bread and see what it tastes like. Okay, this is hot. Ouch. Oh. Isn't that amazing looking? Wow. I am feasting well tonight, my friends. Definitely feasting well tonight. Well, let's find out what this bread is like on the inside. Very, very yellow and very much like a cornbread looking. I want to try it without the jelly. It actually is very much like cornbread. Oh my goodness. Okay, so although the jelly did not congeal, so that part was a fail, the flavor was there. But honestly, like I said, this actually tastes very much like cornbread, and you don't really want jam on it, and I've tried it with the jam. Not as good as with just plain old butter. A little butter will do ya. And, uh, combination of a bite of this with bread, if I can pick one up, is absolutely phenomenal. Mmm. So good. Stay hungry, my friends. So till next time, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Take care now.